This is what I wanted most of all from the vehicle I was to purchase. A visceral drive. Hey crew, it's been about four months now since I first brought home my 23 Cadillac CT5V Blackwing Anniversary Edition to get the full name in there. If you didn't see my first drive video, go watch that. But today's video I wanted to make because we have officially, by more than a few miles, moved beyond the 500 mile break-in period. The red line has increased from 4,500 RPM to 6,500. We are clear to explore this car's performance, which we will do today. I wanted to quickly recap first some of the performance bits I added onto my car, including the carbon fiber one and two package, adding this extended front splitter, side sills, larger rear spoiler and CF diffuser, helping to optimize the aerodynamics. I also added on the carbon ceramic brakes, helping to reduce the unsprung mass at the corners. And for long stints on canyon roads or at the track, to keep that braking performance strong. The Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires are still very fresh. And the only real mods, if you're gonna call them mods, I made to this car were to add a ceramic tint for the windows. I did a full PPF of the front end to help protect that paint and did a ceramic coating to make cleaning it easier. Otherwise, this is a fully stock and standard Blackwing that is gonna be real fun to drive. Inside, the only real performance notables are these carbon-backed bucket seats, which I wanted because they not only look cool, but they actually offer more lateral support. And they've got these pass-throughs for a racing harness in case I wanted to turn this into a full-on track car, take out the rear seats, have the racing harness come from up here to back there. Probably not gonna happen, but still neat that you can do that. And then I chose red seat belts because they make you feel like you're going faster. And I like that. Another look at these front seats. See all that nice side bolstering, and those are power adjusting side bolsters. We've got a thigh extender as well. I also chose suede wrapping for the steering wheel and for the gear shift lever of my six speed manual. I was not about to choose the 10 speed auto, and I really just like the tactile feel of the suede wrapping. Red center marker, very cool. That's about it for the interior. So I think it's about time to take the CT5V Blackwing for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. Yeah, not gonna lie, that fills me with quite a bit of pride. Urgh, this is how we start a car. All right, drive mode. I'm going to begin in my mode, which for me, since it's customizable, I wanted my mode to be as stealthy as possible. So the engine sound is actually further reduced from even the tour drive mode. And then I figure I'll hit the V mode button when I want to make things crazy, which is also customizable. We can see here, yeah, things are a lot more exciting. So it's back to my mode. Then I need to digital rear view. Hello, hi. Oh, I'm wearing my miles per hour hat, by the way, which you can't really see, but I'll put a B-roll clip here. And I don't sell those, but would you buy it if I did? Let me know in the comments. Digital rear view mirror, there we go. Over into reverse and up. That brings up a very high resolution backup camera, lots of different angles. If you wanna learn more about that, watch my first drive video. Release the parking brake over here. And let's scoot. Now we are gonna have a short drive out to a fun road. And during that time, let's start by recapping the powertrain for the CT5V Blackwing. It is GM's LT4 motor. It's a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that makes 668 horsepower and 659 pound-feet of torque. It is routed through your choice of a six-speed manual, as we have here, or a 10-speed automatic gearbox to just the rear tires. And I'm pretty familiar with the feel of a GM six-speed sourced from Tremec. My dad had a C6 Corvette with a six-speed using that LS2 motor, and it operates very much the same way. It's got short throws, they're communicative, 
they notch nicely into place and it's really just refreshing to use something like this in comparison to, I was just in the new BMW M2 and that gearbox, it's got longer throws, it feels like you're working through an elastic band, and then there's not a satisfying notch into each gear. This is just so much more enjoyable to operate at any speed. I even liked using it during the first 500 miles when I couldn't go fast at all. And that was working in concert with the ride quality from these magnetic ride control adaptive dampers, which are so, so good. It's like classic Cadillac loungy plush ride I'm never tense when I'm looking at a pocketed or rough looking road. I know that the suspension is gonna keep me comfy. And then right now in the my mode with the exhaust at the lowest level, the V8 is just murmuring in the background. And then here on the highway, it's great as well. The cabin stays quiet, resisting lots of wind and tire and road noise. I do wish I had the Super Cruise option with the manual, but you can't even do adaptive cruise control or steering assistance without that. You just get cruise control, and that's fine, I suppose, but if I wanted to take this vehicle on a longer trip, having the available Super Cruise, which works so well in the other Cadillac products I've tried, would be really handy. I've been getting pretty close to when I'm just cruising at a steady state on the highway, pretty close the 21 MPG highway rating this car gets, though I will reset the trip computer for our fast driving run and you'll see just how quickly this car runs through its fuel. That's up next. All right, we made it out here to the good road after about 35 miles of highway driving. That jacked up the fuel economy to just under 20 MPG. Not bad for some city and some highway driving and now i'm gonna hit the v mode button and we'll see that will put us into one level up for the steering the suspension and the firmest setting the engine and transmission in their spiciest brake pedal up one engine sound loudest and the performance traction management into sport then from here we're gonna let the games begin we're hearing the transformation of that 6.2 v8 in terms of auditory excitement. It's just superb. And I'm feeling an instant change in those magnetic ride control dampers, firming up the body quite a lot. So the car is super planted through the corners. The steering has more heft to it but it's still quick, super accurate. And the resistance buildup offers tons of communication. Throttle response is superb. There's that noise. Then let's try a no lift shift, flat to the floor. This thing can really move. Oh, it sounds so good when you're on it too. <laughs> Those carbon ceramics have incredible feel and stopping power. I'm just astonished at how in control of itself the Blackwing is. For 4,000 pounds, it moves side to side with such agility and poise that I feel confident pushing this car and not worrying that I'm just going to veer off a cliff. No lift shift. <laughs> oh, I love this gearbox. And still in the firmest suspension setting. Going over bumps, I'm comfortable. And the limited slip differential just gets the power down out of corners so well. The Blackwing isn't just tidy and controllable through the corners. 
It's connected. So many parts of this car are talking to you as the driver. The platform, the tires, these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's have amazing grip and the threshold is channeled through the steering so you know how much is too much and how much is just the right amount. The brakes let you know their limits. The traction management system is so solid that I don't worry so much about the fact that this is a rear drive sports sedan. This engine makes ample power, low down, and it's just an absolute rush when you get to push it. This is what I wanted most of all from the vehicle I was to purchase. A visceral drive. Because fast is something you can find in the automotive market in so many different ways. But feel, that is far more precious and far more exclusive. And is endowed to the Blackwing in great measure. <laughs> oh, I bought the right car. I really, really did. Now let's make one more run up the hill with a bit less talking. I promised you I would show you what it would do to the fuel economy. So after, uh, what, just about 20 miles of the canyon driving, it took our fuel economy from about 20 to 11. Yeah, and just obliterated the fuel. So that's what you get. But is it worth it? Very much so. Guys, this car is not even close, it's, it's far and away the most rewarding and engaging sports sedan I've ever driven. It's the reason why it's the only new car I own.
the other two being an 80 series Land Cruiser and an NA Miata race car. It's so good around town. Like, I want to make that very clear. It's just agreeable to drive. The seats are comfortable. It's quiet when you want it to be. And yet, when you take it to a road that is worthy, it strips naked of all pretense and just becomes this immersive, scintillating driving road car such that I would rather spend time behind the wheel of this thing than vehicles costing two or three times more. I adore it. I absolutely love this car. And I am going to have a video where I talk about things I don't love about it and a video where I talk about things that I do love about it, kind of put it into a summary. Just from that drive on that canyon road, there is only one, one criticism I have for it from a kind of fun to drive perspective. I hear very little of that supercharger whine. You can hear more of it outside the car, but I'm not outside the car, I'm in the car and I wanna hear more of that. I know an aftermarket intake, if I can find one, would cure that problem and that's probably gonna be the first performance mod I make to the car, but that's about it. Everything else is darn near perfection. I sincerely hope you guys have enjoyed this video, but if not, eh, it doesn't matter to me. I really had a good time making it either way. If you did like it though, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>